All right, so before we actually get into compression and EQing, um, kind of how we would do in our stereo world where we compress the overall mix and, and those sort of things that we've done creatively, there's something else we need to do. We need to map the inputs to the OBED. So, and to do that, you have to have uh, certain things set up properly. So we're gonna go into our I.O. real quick because I wanna show you this. So in the bus page, I'm gonna just close down these objects real quick. This is just the default Dolby uh, audio bridge. So as you can see, I have created this OBED here. And I have um, created some subpaths manually in this OBED because I like to send things to certain locations that aren't included in the um, quote unquote avid default 706 track width. Now, what do I mean by that? Now, as you can see, I've got OBED sides here and I have my phone out um, just for it, like to look at this as reference again. So my phone matches what you're seeing on the screen here because I wanna create those sub paths with you and, and then show you how and why. So with that said, I needed a, a specific sub path for the sides, excuse me. I need a specific sub path for the front highs, the mid highs, the rear high and the rear low. The rest of these sub paths come standard in if you if we just do let's do this let's just do i'm going to close this down and we'll show the before and after here so let's create a new path <clears throat> now again depending on what your track width is and what you're trying to do in this scenario we wanted to create um a 916 obed right well i only have a 714 room so there is some nuances here in how to get to this. Well, to do that, since I have that limitation, I had to create some subpaths within that default routing. I don't mean to be redundant, but it helps to kind of just talk over this stuff maybe a few times. So, all right, so what we're gonna do here, we're gonna create a, an aux. I'm gonna just do 706, and let's just call this Obed for the video. Now, if you auto create subpaths, let's see what that looks like. Oh gosh, heaven forbid I expand one thing and, and it expands the rest. All right, so now if we compare these two, I don't know if I can get this all on screen, I'm gonna try to. But I wanted to show what Avid creates by default and what I needed creatively. So let's just go down that list. So here's my Obed for my template. I'm gonna leave that highlighted and we'll just do a one for one. So Obed vid is the new 706 uh, bus that I've created. So as you can see, we start, we're, we're a format of 706 and then we go down to 704, cool. 504, cool, 7050, cool, quad. And you can see the channels to the right and how that maps. All right, LCR. All right, so now we get to the stereo, right? There's that. Now, there's no sides subpath inside this 706 bus by default. Well, let's create one. So what you would do if you wanted to take this approach, like for me, again, if I wanna send something directly out to the sides, that sub path doesn't exist, I have to create it. And we need to create this stuff before we finish linking up the OBED. So let's do it. So what we're gonna do is, is with that bus selected, click on new sub path, and we're just gonna go stereo, and let's do OBED vid sides. Does that make sense? You can create default sub, uh, well, no, we don't wanna do that. Uh, yeah, Obed sides. Now we're gonna move this up to correspond with, I hate that the IO page does that. If you move something around, it expands everything and changes the view. And that really bugs my OCD. <laughs> okay, so there we go. As you can see, sides one, 
Now, you have to change the sub path because by default, the stereo is gonna put it out left and right. So what we do is move this sides over to the left and right. Does that make sense, hopefully? And what we would do is continue, I'm gonna move that up. Depending on what your creative needs are, that's how you would create a sub path. Now let's continue on because we need to do that for front highs, mid high, rear high, and rear low. So we need four more stereo sub paths. So let's do that, four more stereo, Obed, Vid, I'm gonna just do, yeah, let's just do there real quick, Obed vid, and let the IO page run amok on us. All right, so now here are the new sub paths that we created. We need to map these. So let's start renaming. Obed vid, this is gonna be front high. And what that does, if I look up for a reference, that's gonna got it. Um, we've gotta move these speakers to the left top front and the right top front. And then um, let's just go down the line. So this is gonna be mid-high, now that I think about it. We'll do our naming the same way we did before. Rear high, and then rear low. Now again, these subpaths are just dictated by my creative choices. Sometimes I like to have something panned to the sides. I like to have, uh, well, additionally panned. So uh, mids are gonna go to mid-high, which is gonna be down here. As you can see, I'm moving these over. The channels are labeled up top here in the I.O. Now we're gonna go left top rear for these guys. And then the rear surrounds for the rear low. So now you can see we've got Obed stereo vid stereo. So now we're, we're, we're essentially slowly matching my template, but I wanted to do it in a granular fashion so you could create your own. So we got sides, sides, front high, front high, and you can see the channels are matching. Just double checking myself. Left, right, uh, goes to the mid high. There we go, left top, middle, right top, middle, rear high, and rear low. All right, cool. So it looks like, okay, I mislabeled my rear top low. See, good good to double check yourself. Okay, so now that you've created that bus and then whatever track width that your preference is, and if you have a creative preference on, uh, like again, so for me that front wide is a good example. I, ha I had to create that sub path. So now let's map the Obed, let's click okay. So now if we go to our Obed that we created, we're gonna go to the Obed video left, and hopefully this makes sense, Obed video center, Obed video right. Now that's just because that's what we named this bus for this example. All right, so now here is where we get out of the Avid default path and we've created the front wide path, right? So the input's gonna be front wide left and then input there is gonna be front wide right. And then we go to video left side surround and I'm sure you'll, you're starting to maybe see how this connects. And then uh, left rear, right rear, all right, left top front, right top front, and then this is gonna be left top middle, right top middle, all right, left top rear, and lastly, right top rear. So now, <clears throat> in your tracks, uh, let's say this is an example. Uh, it could be base, uh, I'd use this alt, let's use this as an example. Let's assign this alt to an object. Like let's pretend this is a synth or something like that. So we're gonna assign it to, I want it to be a near object. So again, my near objects are 40 through 64. Now I'm gonna send out. Like say I wanted that synth 
to not only be in the left right, but I also wanted it to be in the front highs. I'm gonna take that bust that I've created for the front high. And now if I, let's do this real quick. Let's just take a signal generator. Sorry, this is all grouped. I'm gonna take a signal generator just to try to show the signal um, being sent. And let's just, we'll turn it down here so it's quiet in case. Okay, never seen that error, that's funny. Anyways, we'll use our click track again, I guess. Sorry about that. <clears throat> All right, let's assign this click track to, let's go to 50. Assign that object. And if we hit play, we can see our time code is chasing here to the renderer. That's good. Okay, so now let's send, um, let's move this send over to the front wides. Since it's mono. or the front highs, excuse me, and it looks like I selected the wrong bus. So this is what I get for having, there we go, Obed video front high is what I wanted. There we go. So now you can see we have a sound source, we have our routings for the Obed and how you get to that. Now obviously the playback of Dolby Atmos inside of something like this, YouTube, Patreon, etc. is you're not going to be able to hear it because you would just get the binaural version of that. So that's why I have the audio muted, but you could play this over and over and see the routings and the examples and, and how it could potentially help you. Again, it's your preference and what you'd want to do creatively. But again, I, I find those benefits that we touched on earlier. When I listen to the binaural and I listen to the mixes in the room or go to other studios and I'm using objects only and using this aux, um, Obed sort of technique made up of aux tracks. When I pan something in the room and it's right at 11 o'clock and its height is set to 50 or 100, whatever it is, I find that to be really close and really true representation. Like things aren't moving around. And, and I find that with the bed, it's less accurate. So now the next step, I want to show you how you can EQ and compress your mix. And essentially, this Obed can act like a mix bus. So we'll come back and do that next. All right, so now we've set up our Obed. We've we've assigned our objects. We've done the panning of the Obed to get us to our discrete locations in the room. We've created a bus and subpass of that bus to get to the inputs of the Obed. Now let me show you how you can EQ and compress this mix, uh, which I got a caveat. It's a bit of an experimentation right now because it's it's just it's just something that's new, right? So we're we're all learning a lot about this. Um, a lot of what I'm showing here has been uh, created by myself and or people that I've spoke to or had the pleasure to learn from, and. Uh, so by all means, leave me a comment, say hello. If you have any suggestions or better ways to do something, uh, we can all learn from each other. It's one of my favorite things about the online content is um, generally uh, what I see is a lot of like-minded people trying to grow their skill set. So, all right, so let's move back over the DAW here. And what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, add some EQs and uh, a compressor across this mix. <clears throat> so to do that, I think there are a couple things to think about. So let's group the Obed first. So I'm gonna open up my groups panel real quick. And what I like to do is I like to think of the Obed as, uh, I'm still working on the terminology, but I'm gonna call it, today I'm gonna call it zones. And what I mean by that is in traditional stereo, you know, we could EQ the whole mix. Well, in the immersive space, I might not want to EQ the left, right, center, and sides the same way that I do the tops, or maybe the tops are bright or, or something like that, right? Depending on 
uh, what you're doing creatively and, and what the options are. So what I like to do is create three different zones for the obed. So I'm gonna take the left center right channel and the left surround and the right surround and group those. Uh, excuse me, the front wides as well. I always forget that because I'm in that 714 configuration. So let's just call this zone A for today. And then I'm gonna take the left rears and the tops. We're gonna just call that zone B. Now you could do this more in a more granular fashion if you want. Like if you wanted to separate the rears from the heights, you could. But for this uh, for this example, I find this is what I do on my mixes. So let's demonstrate that, and you can you know find what works for you. So now on this group, I'm going to modify the parameters of zone A. So if you go to the group setting here in the mix window and go to modify, I'm gonna uncheck follow globals and I wanna go into the attributes tab. And so as you can see, this must just be remnant from my template. I wanna link the controls of inserts F through J. And what that's gonna do is if I apply an EQ it's gonna move all the same. So let's do that real quick. So uh, I do this. So let's start with, um, again, Fab Filter Pro Q3. Let's just, I'm holding down Option and clicking and dragging that across all of these. And if Pro Tools plays fairly, I have the EQ curve uh, shown here in the mix window, you should see. So that EQ move would be the same across all those channels. So in real life, what does that look like? Maybe we want to add just a little top end of the mix. So this is uh, going back to the initial setup. Let me pan my screen over. When I toggle back and forth between the stereo mix and the Atmos mix, well, chances are the Atmos mix, again, it starts for me these days with stereo stems or, you know, maybe a multi-track. It's something that's not mastered. So I'm often having to mix in Dolby Atmos and then get close to the stereo master. And uh, obviously without going deep down the road of final delivery specs and loudness and all that, um, which isn't too complicated, but... It's, it's basically like mixing and mastering is what I've found in Dolby Atmos, <clears throat> but not mastering like it is in the stereo world. Not We're not talking limiters and, and, and processing on a two-track that can really add excitement. Um, it's a different experience. We want to, uh, in a previous video, I, I've stated this. It's probably a good time to restate it in case um, some people haven't seen that. We want to make sure we stay true to the original idea. This is just a new format that we're extending the artist vision into. So back on topic, <clears throat> there's a way that you can EQ your mix. Now, since these are grouped, I'm going to take zone B and add another set of Fab Filter Pro Q. Um, and I did that real quick, selected all the tracks hold down shift option on Mac and then insert. And chances are, if Pro Tools plays well, yeah, you can see that this is a way that you could EQ your overall mix. All right, now let's get into compression. Um, well, before we do that, let me touch on one last thing now that I think about it. I put those on different inserts because I wanna control insert F differently than G. Does that make sense? Um, so again, zone A was corresponding to insert F and then zone B corresponds to insert G. Now creatively, you can do something totally different, but this is just an idea on how you could EQ your overall Atmos mix. So now when it comes to compression, I think uh, you can take a similar stance. Um, I've been using this Plugin Alliance, um, the Townhouse bus compressor. And not only does it sound great, but 
it also has a sidechain input, which is where this discussion is going to be going. So I'm going to do, I have a default set up here. So we're going to key the input. We're going to get to this in a second. <clears throat> and I do really, really light compression in here. So you're talking all these sort of full range uh, paths that we're mixing into. We don't need to really compress this. Chances are, again, if you're getting stereo stems to start your Atmos mix, there's already compression, those things applied. So I don't find compression to be as needed in Atmos as much as I did in stereo. Um, balances can get me a long way with that stuff. But should you want to use some compression, um, again, I use this townhouse and I have one parameter set here of 50%. So if I'm compressing, you know, if the needle's moving like 2, dB, 2 dB of gain reduction, it's actually like one, right? So it's a very light compression. Um, I find it just gives a little bump, which is really neat, but we need to assign this key input. So let's do that. I'm gonna create a new mono audio track. And I'm gonna name this Master Sidechain. And we're gonna solo safe this. And what I would do, well, uh, let's do this real quick. Let me input or import some audio so you can see this in action. I'm gonna do, go to a current project that I'm working on real quick. So here's some mastering for a project uh, that's in the works. <clears throat> and I'm just gonna put this in my clip list real quick. So now I've told you if I want to, so here's my stereo master. With that, let me collapse these folders. Collapse the, uh, well, we don't want to collapse the old bed. If I copy this track, I'm just hitting C there on my keyboard. I have the uh, one button keyboard shortcuts um, activated in Pro Tools or focus mode, I believe is what it's called. I'm hitting semicolon, here's my selection, all the way down to the bottom. Now, if I paste that track into, a if I copy the stereo audio track and paste it into a mono audio track, it's just going to paste that mono version. Now, check this out. We need to assign the output of that. I have created a bus, a mono bus called Master Sidechain. So we're gonna then assign the output of this audio track to the input of that bus. And now we can go up here to our townhouse and assign the input of the compressor to that bus of master sidechain. Now you would have to do this across every plugin because unfortunately the key input assignment won't carry over when you have your mix group. Um, so we're just I'm just gonna click and drag Alt and. So there you go. Now, check this out. If I hit play, you're gonna get fed that song into the side chain of the compressor. And if you dial in your threshold, you can see you've got compression now across your Obed mix bus. So really handy way to do dynamics control should you wanna do some finishing dynamics in your Adobe Atmos mix. As you can see, setting up an Obed for your Dolby Atmos mixing is really powerful. It takes some experimentation, but I think you'll find your end results will be a lot stronger using this technique. So there you go. I've walked you through how to create an Obed for yourself, how to EQ and how to compress it, and all the reasons why I think it's so powerful when mixing in Dolby Atmos. I hope you enjoyed this one. If so, please hit that like and subscribe button for me, and we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.